So now that we know more about that link from the data, yeah. how has, have things actually improved firstly between how firefighters used to carry out their job compared to what we see now in terms of equipment and safety and all that sort of stuff? Right. Uh, the ironic thing that we saw from the uh, uh, World Health Organization and IARC is that uh, although that our, our safety equipment has increased maybe two to three times what it was 10 years ago, the toxicity level of fires have increased 10 to 15 percent times. So it is a, a much more dangerous environment for us. That's why our cancer rates are actually increasing. The types of cancers that we're getting are increasing. We're getting cancers earlier in life compared to the general population. As well, we get cancer two, three, four times higher than the general population for now 20 cancers that the federal government of Australia has now agreed to move forward on. Okay, so federally, it sounds like Australia is doing pretty well yes. on this front. Yes. But your gripe is with the state and territory legislation that doesn't seem to match up. It's, uh, there's a disconnect there. Yes, like uh, the absurd issue is is these cancers are covered federally. So an airport firefighter, say in Perth, uh, would go to an incident uh, and you would have Perth firefighters go to the same incident. The firefighters that are the airport firefighters would be better protected under the legislation for, for more cancers than the firefighters that are from Perth. So we're trying to go to the different states. We're going to Western Australia, Tasmania, etc. And, and we've had really good meetings with the politicians because they realize uh, just what an incredible situation it is that they need, that firefighters need their support. And in terms of picking which cancers are covered by this legislation, yeah. How does that happen? I mean, is it quite difficult to define which cancers are, are caused by this sort of work? It's all about the science. Uh, as uh, uh, science progresses, we see that certain uh, uh, cancers are, are, a, are a firefighter cancer. For instance, pancreatic, thyroid cancer, very deadly cancers. But we see that because of the uh, uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, the benzenes, the particles, uh, the new challenges that we have in firefighting, those cancers have increased. One of the areas that we're looking at is there's really a social inequity in many of the states in Australia because you have men's reproductive organs protected by cancer legislation, but women do not have the same protection. Mm. which is absolutely absurd when you look at, at women and men going to the same fire. But for some reason, women, uh, there's been a, uh, a type of implicit bias in the last number of years, systemic discrimination. So what's happened is because we have been a male-based profession for years, it's just now that we're getting a uh, sufficient number of women in the fire service to, to identify tragically that women's cancers are uh, just as important as the men's cancers. Considering the risks, do you think firefighters entering the profession these days are going in eyes wide open? Is there enough education to tell these people what they might be getting in themselves in for? Yeah, uh, that's, that's part of this legislation is because legislation is always the key to prevention and it's the key to the education. The second a firefighter is hired today, uh, we educate them on the need to do everything you can to minimize your cancer risks. Because you can't minimize your cancer risks on the fire ground, but you can minimize your cancer risks from everything, from being a non-smoker, diet, uh, uh, keeping yourself in good shape. Uh, we, we do everything, and that's education. And that's why the legislation assists us so well, is because that's the biggest education of all, is that firefighters see that they're the only profession in Australia that has this, this specific legislation that allows firefighters to get quicker access to compensation on occupational cancers. Mm. And is there a lesson here for the general public as well, in terms of the risks associated with being around smoke, being around fires, um, in, in terms of somebody wanting to know their risks, is it the repeated exposure that is the real problem for firefighters or, or can you have real problems just from being exposed to one severe bushfire, for there, example? It's not one fire that kills firefighters, it's hundreds of fires over their career. The cumulative value builds up in the body, it creates mm -hmm. uh, uh, cell disruption and that's where you get cancer cells. But, but there are, every major city has major chemical aspects. I know in the United States, it's a very publicized, there was a uh, train wreck and it basically, uh, the chemicals that were on that train literally destroyed the water ability of that 
uh, large city in, in the U.S. to be able to serve its people. So mm. chemicals is just a way of life. And every single year we see that there's upwards of 15 to 20 new chemicals being put on the market. And they have no idea on, on exactly how that's going to impact society, how that impacts plastics. And especially when they burn and they break down in combustible matter, mm. it even makes it worse because now firefighters uh, uh, absorb it, they inhale, they ingest it, and that's what's causing unbelievable levels of cancer of Australian firefighters. Mm. Alex Forrest, really appreciate you taking the time Thank to explain much. all of that to us. Thanks so much. Cheers.